are certain places we come upon in our lifetime that forever change us. For Dr. Schaller, that place was the Serengeti. The Serengeti is a naturalist dream. The diversity of animals, astonishing. And at the apex of the food chain lies the king of beasts, the lion. In 1966, George Schaller set out to study lions in a unique way, to understand the health of the lion population by understanding the health of its environment, specifically to address the interrelationships between these predators and their prey. Schaller broke new ground, spending three and a half years observing, photographing, and writing about the lion as no one else had by breaking down the amount of prey needed to support a large population of lion. If the prey diversity was healthy, he surmised, the lions would be as well. Along the way, he documented the advanced social structure of the only social cat in existence. Schaller's work bore witness to lions in courtship, giving birth, mothering, hunting, and at play. As the naturalist observed the family dynamics of the big cats, he also raised his own. Schaller and his wife Kay brought their two young sons along on the mission. Whether picnicking on a ridge on the Serengeti or playing with an abandoned lion cub they had named Ramses, the boys got an education that most children could only dream of. We enjoyed going out. I would also take them out camping in the plains and uh, put up a tent in the plains. Well, wherever you go, you're in the middle of a territory of a lion. So then the lion would come and roar at night. And if you're in a tent, the walls seem very thin when a lion roars outside. Then you'll come closer and trip over the guy ropes of the tent, and the whole tent would shake. And those are memorable experience for a family. It was a wonderful experience, probably the happiest my wife and I had in the field. Schaller's book, The Serengeti Lion, would become one of the most influential texts in conservation biology. Beyond its factual revelations, Schaller's work and observational insight inspired countless conservationists to come. Dr. Schaller, earlier today I asked you if you had to go one last trip, where would it be? You said without hesitation the Serengeti. What is the pull for this, with the Serengeti for you? It's going back into the Pleistocene, the last ice age. You can, before humankind had such an impact on the environment, you can stand on a hill in season and you can see a million animals literally spread out before you on the plains. Wildebeest, zebra, gazelle, there be a hole in this big herd and there be some lions lying there. And just the impact, the visual impact, the sensory impact on seeing this is just indescribable. And, and then in this place was a place that you and Kay took your sons for four years and raised them. Talk about that raising children in, a, in an environment like that. Well, I've been very, very fortunate. I, have a wife that enjoys the simple life. Get away. <laughs> Get really away. simple life. <laughs> <laughs> and so uh, she taught our children school for the first few years, which brings the family very close together. And when you want to go out, you can always take your kids and show them exciting things. Uh, so it, it was a great experience for the family, and we had some other biologists there which were studying other species, so you had a group of people you could share information with. And so uh, I couldn't think of a better way to spend a few years. And you actually took your children out more than there. There were other times when they traveled with you as well, correct? Oh, we spent two years in central India when I was working on tigers there and spent two years in Pakistan when I was working in the Himalaya. I took him to Brazil a lot when we were working on jaguars. But then they got to be teenagers and they wanted their peers here in school. So 
they didn't go as much. And those were two boys, so they probably wanted to date as well. Well, I didn't ask them that. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us about raising the lion cub. Uh, how did that come about? Well, you know, I saw dozens and dozens of lions dying of starvation uh, for one reason or another, because prey moved out of the area. Uh, yeah. The big males ate up all the meat, and the cubs didn't get much. Uh, then I came on this female, and there was a kill, and it was, cub was too small to eat meat, but she brought the cub there. She did, obviously didn't have milk, so it was just skin and bones, and she dropped it there. And so I watched that, and then a big male came and picked it up, and I thought, gee, he's gonna crush it like they sometimes do. No, he put it down gently. I couldn't bear leave it. So I took it back, we kept it a few months, then it ultimately went to the Milwaukee Zoo where it raised a lot of cubs on its own. You were quoted as saying that a deafening silence will fill the African night unless everyone looks upon the lion with greater compassion. What's your hope for the lion and for us? Well, the sad thing is uh, people had forgotten about the lions because it's so easy to see in reserves. They just lie next to you. But meanwhile, outside of reserves, the lion has drastically decreased in recent years. So there's serious concern now, partly because lions kill livestock, partly because uh, woodlands are converted into fields, there are more and more people. So for many of these places, one has to move beyond reserves and try to protect whole landscapes, leave the reserves as cores, but work with the local people to assure their livelihood, but also retain some uh, natural habitat so that lions can move maybe through corridors to another area and so forth.